the deal had started getting in a randomness car at 6 o'clock in the morning, it never got much better from there. The fuller match folks coming to Newcastle fans, so stick around if you really, really want to. White band there, ladies and gentlemen. I hope all is well. I hope you all have had a good week. I've had a bit of a weird week. A couple of days ago, I was eating apples with Shola Amiobi. Yeah, if you know, you know. If you don't know, then you either need to get to know or you've just become a fan in the last couple of years. Anyway, it's match day. It's currently about 5.30 in the morning. I am up. I am buzzing. I've been doing me dance. I've had local hero on in the shower. But this is a bit of an unusual match day for me. So I stuck a post out on social media asking whether anyone had a spare seat driving down to Fulham or travelling down to Fulham, whether it was by horse, by car, by the back of someone's scooter, because I'm staying down until the Wimbledon game. Social media being the amazing place, it is my page being the amazing thing that it is. I had loads of comments, all sorts of comments. And I am currently about to head over to a metro station car park to get in the car with some blokes I've never met to drive down to Doncaster train station to get a train to London from Doncaster train station. So, this is either going to go really well or it could be serial killers and this is the last you ever see of me. So if it is, please someone now send this to the police. But, hey, if they are serial killers, if it all gets a little bit strange, I've got a bottle of this. This will smooth things over, get this down my neck, so at least I'm going to go out on a bit of a win with a couple of Jaeger bombs down my neck. So it's going to be a very interesting start to a match day, to say the least. And look, Fulham away, massive game, great away day, absolutely love it. Down by the waterfront with the nicest fans in the whole world. Does anyone hate Fulham? Does anyone know a knobhead Fulham fan? I certainly don't. Um, yeah, two, two games in about three days. Look, Newcastle have not really hit the ground running so far, but we are sitting third in the league and we can go top, top of the table. And for any historians out there, Fulham away is always a massive game, a massive moment in our history because one of our club icons and club legends, Santiago Munez, once found out that his father watched him play against Fulham to make his debut in an emotional moment in the club. Hey, Dad! You know what I played against Fulham? My dad's out of the game! He sent me play, man! He's probably watching you right now! Again, if you know, you know. If you don't know, you probably just need to get to know. Oh, what a player Santiago was. What a player could do with him today, especially if Isaac's out. But I'm confident, of course I am. We haven't really hit the ground running. I'll be more confident once I've had a couple of these and probably seven or eight beers. It's supposed to be red hot down in London. That's why I've got the pins out. Bring it on. Eddie Howes, random car, uh, carpool karaoke mags. Today can go one of two ways. It'll be either the best match day I've ever had. Or I won't even make the match because I'm in a body bag in the back of someone's car. Who it? Just waiting to go over there. There's also another way this could go. Like, imagine if I get to the car park and there's just nobody there. They just woke up and gone without us. <laughs> this morning could go really, really badly. But I'm going to keep the faith in humanity. I'm going to keep the faith in our beautiful Newcastle fans that that does not happen. Worst case scenario, I've got a bag of cans and a bottle of Jägermeister, so I'll just get mortal and figure it out from there. Uh, I've just arrived. Bob can confirm. You're not a serial killer, Bob, are you? You're not a serial killer. No, no. Serial killer, Bob, are you? You're not a serial killer. No, no. You're not a serial killer. No, no. Right, serial killer. Right, serial killer. That is a very, very good start. On the Fulham we go. I'm around the world with my beer choices today from a random corner shop in Gateshead. <laughs> Walker is this one. Ooh. 5.2%. <laughs> Tasty. Right then, just landed in London King's Cross and I am joined by this gentleman who was the person who sent me a message Offered me a lift in his car, and here we are. What, two or three cans deep now? Ah, uh, two or three two cans. Two or three cans deep, right. and a full English breakfast. Right. Just was started, it? though. Just started. Just started. <laughs> Wasn't a serial killer? No, no, no. No, no, no. I don't think he's got any plans to put us in a body bag, but this is why I absolutely love this fan base. Right, before you go, 
So I'm going to go and put me, me uh, suitcase in my hotel. Score predictions? I'm going to say 3 0 to First scorer? Say, no, I wouldn't say Tanali. Oh, I'm not going to say Tanali! I'm going to go for an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> right then, um, absolute pleasure. And if, just if you want to let anyone know, your taxi services to Doncaster train station, <laughs> your card or. Oh, yeah. It's on the meter. It's on the meter. <laughs> it's on the meter. It's cost me a fucking fortune. And right, now I'm left to fend for myself, and I do not have an absolute <laughs> Scooby Doo where I'm going. Gotta get to the hotel. I'm gonna end up probably buying a new castle at this rate. I right, just want to find my hotel now. I tell you what, this has been a palaver. Card wasn't working. The guys have had to let us through the different uh, tube stations. But what I will say, Newcastle United fans are absolutely class. The gentleman there who's just given me a lift. My God, it's amazing. Met them in a random car park, had a breakfast with them, drove down in the car with them, had some beers with them. Oh, it's just absolutely class. I love meeting new people. His dad, Bob, didn't want to be on the camera. That's totally fine. I respect that. I didn't want to put a camera in the face. I would have loved to have asked him loads of stuff on the way down, but I didn't want to do that. Um, he's supported Newcastle since he was since 1962. He can actually remember us winning a cup in 1969. I love to hear them stories, absolutely love it. And what he basically said to me is if Eddie Howe is already up there with one of his favourite ever managers of his lifetime, he just needs to get that cup over the line. That starts today at Fulham to send us top of the Premier League. Right, I'm going to drop this shite. Haven't had a chance to get any Jägermeisters down my neck, so I might have a cheap Jäger bomb by myself and then go and find the Newcastle fans. Are we here? Eddie Howe's London Storming. You've got a million options in London for bars. Where am I? Where am I going? Weatherspoons. Weatherspoons. It's not even cheap in London, is it? Right, I'm joined by Neil and Spoons. He watches me videos because he's got a shit sense of humour as well. On the Jaegers. On the mags. On the mags. Oh. <laughs> the man. Right, what the stadium teams have just dropped. Ooh, Eddie Howe has dropped long staff. Nobody expected us to see that. I don't think anyone in the universe of London expected us to see that. Um, Willick is in, which I'm happy about. Kelly is in instead of Hall, which some Newcastle fans aren't happy about. I am. And most importantly, Mr. Isaac is fine. He's totally fine. It's his 25th birthday. That's what it's all about. Eddie Howe playing the black card. Mr. Silver didn't think he was playing. I'm with the crew. The crew who travelled up with us here. Just had a couple of weather spoons, cheap as hell. I got a double vodka. I got a, I got a half a half a Abbott's Ruddles, half an ale, and two Jaeger bombs for eleven pound in London. In London, right up to Craven Cottage we go. Rain is starting to come down. Not ideal when I'm in the, when I'm in the pins. Um, fucking mad on the stadium. Up the max, up the max, up the max, up the max. We all bought, we all bought, we don't get it. Hey, hey, please, 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 I'm going to keep the overall predictions, our predictions. Oh, God, fucking hell. Come on, on the yeah. spot. 3-1 Newcastle. First goal. Oh, man. Joe Willick. Oh, oh, oh. oh. yeah. Vaughan's 3-1. <laughs>
Mario Pomojoni. Played shite, got beat, beers are 100 quid, everyone's rude, Greg's don't do corned beef, pasties. The hotel I've stayed in, <laughs> first two nights of this trip has pretty much resembled a brothel like dirty hole. Not even enough room to bend down and put your shoes on without having to shuffle around and move your bags. Absolute hole in the wall. The Wi Fi password <laughs> was a photo of the router that the people who own the hotel thought was a great idea to print that photo and stick a photo of the router on the wall rather than just put the Wi Fi password <laughs> on a Word document. Chucked me guts up out of a taxi window on Saturday night after the match. Random photos of me kidnapping a dog. Don't even remember the dog. Oh my God, hangover from absolute hell on Sunday. And Newcastle put in probably one of the worst performances of the season. This match vlog's coming late because of all that I've just said. I was staying down to Wimbledon as I record this. The Wimbledon game has been called off just to rub that little bit of extra salt in the wounds. So not only have I paid for like hotels to stay down here Saturday night, Sunday night... None of that. No, no, no. Uh, Wimbledon's called off. It's a flooded pitch in September. L literally, couldn't make it up. In September, a match is getting called off in England. So I'm just in London for no reason, spending all that money on beers. So yeah, let's very briefly talk about the football on Saturday. Look, it wasn't very good. Was I absolutely spangled, as you've just seen as I finished off with them Jager bombs? Yes, that's why there's not much match footage of the actual game, because I was absolutely spangled. Good night by all accounts, but I think I needed to be to watch that. We never got going from the first whistle. And has that performance been coming? I think it's fair to say it has. We have had an element of looking at our matches. Southampton, we were resilient in defence, but we didn't look great before we got the man sent off. Tottenham, they had most of the ball and we played a little bit deeper and didn't create very much. But again, we were quite resilient and they didn't create many chances to test Nick Pope. It, it's it been coming and there is concern and signs there. I've said from day dot that Eddie Howe's Newcastle teams do not start seasons fast. The fact we have 10 points in that start to the season when we, when we haven't really played that well was a positive. And I'm waiting for Newcastle to step up a gear. But what I saw on Saturday was just a disjointed Newcastle team. I thought defensively we were shocking how... Their forward, uh, Jimenez, has the time to take that ball down and strike it past. The, like, how Fabian Shea's not closer to him was just shocking. Nick Pope, we don't need to talk too much about Nick Pope's mistake. Nick Pope has already got us a lot of points so far this season. So for me to talk about a goalkeeper making one mistake, if a goalkeeper makes a mistake, it's more highlighted. If a defender gives a ball away, unless he causes a direct goal, it's not as talked about. If a striker misses a sitter, we all forget about it quite quickly. Nick Pope can let that one go. Yes, un uh, annoying. Yes, frustrating. But he's kept us in plenty of matches so far this season. So that's frustrating. Second half, we improved a little bit. Harvey Barnes is just proven exactly why we signed Harvey Barnes. And long may he stay in the team. He was probably one of our best players in the final third. But we just never had enough from the f first whistle to the last. And Fulham, this season, with the signings they've made, the likes of Anderson coming into their defence, they look a decent little side. Um, lots of freedom in how they played. Lots of intensity. Lots of pace. Smith Rowe, brilliant signing playing between their lines, really, really good player, and they fully, fully, fully deserve the win. We've had a great run of things down at Fulham, but not not this time around. And then, you know, Bruno, let's talk about him. I've talked about Bruno quite a lot, and this isn't the let's single one player out, but I think if there's one player that's probably not being talked about because of who he is, when he's getting away with really, really slow and ineffective performances, it's Bruno. And I think that mistake in the last couple of minutes summed up his start to the season. Is it because he didn't get much recovery time from the end of the season in, into Copper America, straight over to Japan? That's maybe a conversation. Anthony Gordon, for me, is still not looking body language and work rate-wise like the same Anthony Gordon, and nobody really knows what that issue is. Alexander Isak, great to see him in after obviously worries he wasn't going to make the game. He is not affecting matches like the £65 million top quality striker that we all talk about we all know and love he's not he's not leading the line is he suited to having someone playing off him that's a conversation for another day i'm looking a bit further afield tonali didn't start this match obviously he came on in the second half he needs to start football matches and if eddie howe doesn't 
bring him in soon, I am going to become very frustrated. Kieran Trippier was back in. I was happy to see that, but he did not affect the game how we've seen him come on and do so as a substitute. It was just from the first whistle to the last. The intensity wasn't there. And what I'm worried about at the moment is when new, this Newcastle team tries to play a little bit different without that intensity, we lose something. But at the same time, teams are starting to find out how Eddie Howe's teams like to play. I'm not worried in terms of mega, mega worried. I do think performances will improve. And I do think with every defeat, we learn a little bit. Sorry, my arm is literally falling asleep. As I feel like I'm about too soon as well. Um... You know, the cup game's been cancelled. That's now been rearranged for next Tuesday. So, would it have been nice to have a quick turnaround of a match down at Wimbledon to get a win and get a bit of momentum? Yeah, I think it would against low league opposition. I think we would have managed to get a comfortable win against them and move on from there. But we go we go again against Man City. We'll talk about that later in the week. We all know what a game against Man City looks like. It's almost a free hit to some degree. We don't have a good record against them. Does do many teams in the Premier League? They've just lost Rodri. Looks like to a serious injury. That's a bonus for us. But again, we need a massive, massive. We need to massively step things up defensively. We weren't good enough against Fulham. Midfield looks so disjointed. When Bruno's not pulling the strings, Newcastle don't play well. Joe Linton is being relied on a little bit more to do more attacking work because of that. And Joe Willock is only coming back into this team, and I'm glad to see him. So I would like to see Joe Willock and the team moving forward but from attack. To defence, to attacking as a team, defending as a team, it's just not there at the moment and it's not good enough. And for a lot of matches now, what, two, three, when we've been picking up points, we've all come out of the, the stadiums a little bit concerned that it hasn't really been a game that we felt like we should have won. Wolves felt a little bit like that. Tottenham felt a little bit like that. So you could argue this one has been coming. But it is only one defeat so far this season. It is still September. And there is still plenty positives with Tanari still to properly come in the team. And we learn from a, a poor performance like that. We've only lost one match this season. That's not too much to worry about. So on to Man City we go. Um, I've, I, I've just drowned my sorrows in a stake because obviously I'm, I cannot be at the Wimbledon match, which is just shat on me. This trip to London, get me back to Newcastle. Every, like I say, everyone's rude. It's expensive as hell. And I'm going to go and get myself to bed and finish off and get this vlog out. It's been interesting, to say the least, and this hangover from Saturday is probably going to last two or three days. Anyone who uh, I had the pleasure of speaking to uh, across these couple of days, absolutely lovely to do so. Newcastle fans giving me a lift down to the station, uh, Martin and Bob, lovely fellas. That's what you, this football club's all about. This, that's what this fan base is all about. So I hope you've enjoyed this. All of that stuff was probably the only positive of what was a terrible day at the office. But keep the faith, Newcastle fans. If you've liked this, whack that like, whack that subscribe. Get black, white banter across all social media. And on to Man City on Saturday we go. How are you, lads?